What's up guys? Uh, this is the part two video to the hand printer. Um, if you haven't seen the first part, you should definitely go check that out. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I improved the printer uh, in terms of its calibration by creating this base, this triangular base down here. At the end, I'll show you how this piece was uh, printed. So I hope you stick around for the whole thing. And if you like what you see, please uh, consider subscribing and uh, liking this video. Awesome. I started this project like any good project uh, on Fusion, laying out the geometry for the base and creating the joints to connect each tube. And this will help with uh, calibration later on. If you want to see more details on the design process, let me know in the comments. Now that I finished designing everything, it was time to make it real by uh, just reaching out and grabbing the parts straight out of the computer. It even came with nuts. Hmm. These days you can just snap your fingers and all the parts you need will just magically appear on your table. It's kind of amazing. So now that all the parts are basically 3D printed, it was time to work on assembling the triangle. Super cool. So I first started by taking out the old base and then I wanted to install all of the joints on the anchors. And the really cool thing about each of these joint pieces is that it allows me to individually calibrate the height of each anchor independently of each other. So now that that was done, I started on the build plate with this really cool three-way joint that sits in the center there. I went ahead and added those uh, three pieces on each tube and that allows me to adjust the height of the build plate. One thing that I was not super proud of of this design was that I basically designed the life hinge into each part and the life hinge was made to clamp around the tube. The way that the print came out, it was very weak in the life hinge direction and so some of the parts broke and so for next time I think I will make the, the clamp in two pieces rather than just one and that should be a lot stronger. And don't get me wrong, life hinges are awesome but for these parts where they had to be in a lot of different orientations, it just didn't work out. Now comes one of the, the great benefits of having this space. I can measure everything and make sure that everything is at the right dimension and spacing from each other. I wanted to add some LEDs so that I could see the prints at night without having to have all the lights on. So I went ahead and installed it onto the, the mover, the triangle mover. These lights really add a lot of dimension to the prints, especially the time lapses. I really like how the shadows look as the triangle is moving around. Here's another beautiful benefit. I can move the whole base as one, where before I had to move each one individually. I went ahead and added masking tape to the base plate to help with uh, first layer adhesion and I got this really thick uh, painter's tape, it's really nice. Yeah and here you can see the other benefit of this base, I can adjust on three points the height and orientation of the build plate, super cool. And here I'm adjusting the height of each anchor. So now that I had the heights adjusted and everything, I had some really clean numbers that I can plug into the calibration. So after setting up the base, I noticed that there was still a problem. Yeah, that sound. The sound of skipping steps. Come on. So apparently there was still something wrong with my printer somewhere. And at first I thought it was a bad motor controller, maybe it wasn't outputting enough power. Um, I tried to fix that and then I, I burnt it, so I had to buy a new one. So after crying for a little bit, I realized that the problem was in the software and it was in my units per steps. Awesome. 
now that that nightmare was over, it was time to start the print. So I passed the filament through the, the filament runout sensor and then loaded it up into the extruder and made sure to take out all of the previous uh, plastic that was in there. Oh yeah! And just like that, the printer was ready to go with the first few layers coming in hot. I stayed to look at it for quite some time. It's always mesmerizing seeing the print go. So it's the next day and I'm gonna check on the printer to see if it's okay. That's crazy. Oh wow. We still got a little bit of plastic left. So this is uh, day number two and it should be done by now. So let's see. In my next video, I'll show you how I turn this uh, vase into a lamp and put a plant on top. This is influenced by Simon's lamp, plant, lamp, so super cool. So, really happy with the way this turned out. I mean, it's beautiful the way the PLA diffuses the light. And even though you can still see the layers, I think that adds a lot of character to the piece. So if you like content like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas of what to do next or what you want to see um, or how you're feeling, leave a comment um, in the video. And with that, take care and I'll see you in the next one.